I left South Korea in August of 2020 after four years of living and working there as a native English teacher. I originally applied through EPIC and got placed in the Cholanando language program. Now it's been a few months since I've been back and I've had plenty of time to reflect on my time living and teaching in South Korea. If you've come across my channel before, then you know that I have made videos about living in Korea in the past, but today I wanted to do the ultimate guide to teaching in Korea. The topics that I'm going to talk about in this video are based off my own experiences and stories from other teachers I've met over the past four years, based off a public school environment. So if you are looking to work for a private academy or a hagwon, then not all of this information is necessarily going to apply to you. There's a huge amount of things that I wanted to cover in this ultimate guide and so for easy of viewing what I'm going to do is split them into six shorter videos. All six of these videos are going to be linked down below in a playlist and you can also find them on my channel. Everything is going to be time stamped so that you can skip to a specific topic that interests you. The six videos will be number one, where will I live, city versus rural. Number two, landing in Korea, orientation and contracts. Number three, off to school, apartments and co-teachers. Number four, teaching schedules, class types and the weekends. Number five, your first class, teaching tips and attitude to teaching. And number six, the pros, cons and the reality of teaching in South Korea. So let's crack on with the first topic, which is where will I live? I'm not going to go into extensive detail about the application process to getting into Korea to teach as there's a huge amount of information already online and on YouTube about it, but basically the most sought way is to go through a recruiting agency such as the Talk or EPIC program. I personally went through the EPIC program and it's basically a couple of months of back and forth paperwork and a video interview. On your application form or somewhere in the application process, you may be able to request to live and work in a specific part of South Korea. However, just because you've requested to live in a specific province or city does not guarantee that you are going to be placed there. Big cities such as Seoul and Busan have high application rates. Everybody wants to live in Seoul. And so you're gonna have to get your paperwork in extremely quickly in order to beat the hundreds of other people also trying to get those placements. You can also do what I did and not put a preference down at all. I was pretty much willing to be put anywhere. And that is how I ended up living in the most rural province of Korea, Cholanamdo province. And you know what? I lived there for four years, so it couldn't have been that bad. You should be aware of the possibility that you could end up in a heaving city or completely in the middle of nowhere or something in between those two extremes. Even if you state a specific place you want to live, just be prepared for the fact that you could end up somewhere different. Now I'm not saying that these recruiting agencies are going to completely ignore your request if you pop it down on your application form, but say for example you apply for Busan and Busan is already filled up, then they're gonna have to place you elsewhere. You need to be open-minded and be willing to adapt to new and different places. I think a lot of people who go over to teach in South Korea do presume that they're going to end up in a city that is very Seoul-like. And when they don't, it's a bit kind of... It is a 50-50% chance as to whether your recruiter is going to tell you the exact location that you are going to be living in advance to arriving in Korea. Before I flew out, I knew that I was going to be in Cholanando province, but I had no idea where in that province I was going to be living. It was kind of like walking in blind. <laughs> it wasn't until the first full day of my orientation training when I found out exactly where I was going to be and that I'd be teaching elementary students. Meanwhile, other people in my orientation had known for weeks the exact location they were going to be living in. If you are replacing a teacher and filling a position, then it is possible you may be able to reach out to the previous teacher or they may be able to reach out to you if your contact information is given to them by the recruiting agency. This could happen before you land in Korea or during your orientation period. I was able to contact the teacher I was replacing to ask a few basic questions 
as to where I was going and what the school was going to be like. My position was recently filled this year and so I was able to pass on any information that my replacement wanted. You may also be contacted by any other native teachers in your area who would just like to say hello and welcome you and just let you know that when you land in your new town you are not going to be alone. <laughs> Basically to sum up this point though, just try to be a bit open-minded as to where you may be living and be prepared for the unexpected. I mentioned in the first topic that positions in the big cities like Seoul and Busan are difficult to obtain due to the high volume of applications. If you are a person who prefers the city life, then there are plenty of other great cities in South Korea to consider. And this is a personal preference, so I recommend that you do some research first. In my opinion, Daejeon is a good city. And if you want to be close to Seoul, then I would recommend looking at Gyeonggi-do province, places like Suwon. There are big cities further away from the capital, such as Gwangju and Daegu. For those who prefer the quieter life or really just don't mind where they go, then don't be afraid to consider a rural position. Rural or lesser populated cities can be just as amazing to live in and you're going to get a different experience on life in Korea and Korean culture compared to living in a modernized city such as Seoul. Kangwondo is a very picturesque province and I personally love all the little historical towns such as Gyeongju and Jeonju. Korea has numerous islands that you can also go and live on, Jeju-do being the biggest one and Jeju-do is absolutely stunning. I have also met teachers that live on tiny, tiny little islands who have to get a ferry to get back to the mainland. Big cities are going to be quite modernized. You're going to have access to standard things such as public transport, trains, subway stations, airports, buses where live schedules can be viewed via an app, cinemas, shopping malls, chain supermarkets, foreign supermarkets, foreign restaurants. Rural or countryside towns may not have all of those things. Now, I think I lived as rural as you could get without living on an island. I think the population of my town was roughly about 11,000 people. We did not have a train station. Um, our bus system was not particularly modern <laughs> and we did not have huge superstore supermarkets. I could not use an app to see when the next bus was coming. Instead, I would have to check the Korean timetable in the bus station. I would have to take a bus to the next town over to be able to get to a train station. We had like farmer supermarkets, um, but to get to a big chain superstore, it was also a bus ride to the next city. <laughs> I'm a pretty chilled person, so this really didn't bother me. I quite enjoyed traveling around in my spare time, and I really loved the quiet life of a countryside town. Of course, these are extreme opposites and there are places in between that you could end up living in. You might be in a little quiet rural town, but only 20 to 30 minutes by bus to a big city. You might end up in a decent sized city, but be somewhere on the coast or on an island and be really far from Seoul. In the end, it comes down to personal preference. I was used to a rural setting before I arrived in Korea. So when I was placed in my little town, it wasn't really a shock to me and I adjusted fairly easily. People who are used to a big modern city and using things like food apps and that sort of thing will find it a little more difficult to adapt to a more rural setting. I'm going to say this many times throughout this ultimate guide, but just be aware and open-minded to the fact that you could be living somewhere that is not the norm for you back home. Here are some quick pros to living in a rural setting. You might get paid more. Rural pay is a thing in some provinces. You will connect with locals better. It is beautiful. You've got fields and mountains. It gives you a reason to go and travel in your spare time. It's a slower life. It's a more chilled life. And you're more likely to experience Korean culture in everyday life. 
And pros to city life, you probably won't have to travel that much because you have everything you need in one place. You are closer to airports. You might make friends easier as there are more people to meet, there's a higher population and big cities will have university populations so you'll bump into university students who are interested in making foreign friends. There's a chance more people will speak English and it's a modernised lifestyle. Regardless of whether you are in a city or a rural setting, your first few weeks are going to involve figuring out how to get around locally and building a daily routine. It doesn't matter if you are figuring out the Seoul bus system or the Mokpo bus system, finding out where you're going to get your basic necessities from. No matter what, that adjustment period is going to be there no matter where you are. You're settling in might just look a little different from somebody else's. And you know what? Everybody's different. One person might really struggle in their first couple of weeks to adjust and settling into life in Seoul, while another person may settle in very, very easily, but be in the middle of nowhere. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure not to miss the next instalment of the Ultimate Teaching Guide in Korea. You can find the playlist down below or on my channel. Yeah, hope to see you in the next video and have a great day.